Romans chapter 5. Also remember Brother Marshall in your prayers. Um, he is not in a good way, and we know that he's suffering and in pain. And we pray the Lord just shines his love in through him in the night. Amen. We get those long nights of suffering and pain and agony, and we just reach to the Lord. Oh, he's so good. No one loves us like Jesus. No one understands us like Jesus. Romans chapter 5, we've been in Romans uh, as a series in Sunday school. And this morning we finished chapter 4, and then I thought it's good to go right into chapter 5 and the 11 o'clock message. Because Romans chapter 5 is one of my favorites. Uh, it's up there. It's one of my favorite chapters, you know, of your favorite chapters to go to. Romans chapter 8 is also one. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 talks about the benefits of justification by faith. Paul up to this point has been talking uh, about the fact that God saves the ungodly. He saves sinners. He came to seek and to save them which are lost. Many people don't grasp that. They don't understand that. And then the more that we bring glory to the gift of God, the more that we start to understand that, you know, I wasn't deserving. I wasn't deserving of God's love, but God gave it to me to the praise of the glory of His grace and His being. It was His will, not my will. But Paul had established this. He also established the covenant of grace which God had promised Abraham. And Abraham, what did he do? He believed God against hope. Hope against hope. He believed God. He staggered not at the promises of God. Abraham was fully persuaded of what God said versus over what Abraham saw. Abraham saw impossibility, but he saw that God's promise, despite what I see, I know that God is the more of the reality than what I see. And so that God had imputed, he had charged uh, Abraham with righteousness, that Abraham was saved by justification through faith. So Paul's argument up to this point is the covenant of grace. That's called the covenant of grace. It's not of works. It's not, uh, salvation is not something I earn. It's something that's been given, and then I believe. Uh, otherwise, that grace is no more grace. That's his argument. It can't be grace if you have earned it. Grace must be something you have not earned, but you've received. And so we see the covenant of grace is not disannulled by the works of the law, which the works of the law had come 400 years after the covenant of grace that we see that God had blessed Abraham. Here in Romans chapter 5, he starts talking about the blessings of justification. Now, we have really studied justification. Um, I believe we have. Uh, I believe most of it who have been here throughout it, you say, yeah, we, we've definitely talked about justification a lot. And I believe, I, I hope, I pray that we're at a point where we understand the definition, the basics, the fundamentals of, fun, of justification because it will help soak in Romans chapter 5 that much more. When you start seeing the benefits of knowing this doctrine, not, not only just what God has done and our benefits, but understanding it, understanding the benefit of understanding justification by faith. Now, you can split up Romans chapter 5 into two parts. The first, verse 1 through 11, is the assurance of hope. That's one of the blessings of justification. The second half is verses 12 through 21, and it talks about our position in Christ. What a glorious benefit that we have of the work of God and justification. Now, we're going to start in verse 1, and honestly, um, I don't know if we're going to get past verse 1 this morning, uh, because we are going to have a lot to talk about, and just Romans chapter 5, verse 1, read with me, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's it, right there, that alone. Uh, and verse 2, now verse 1 talks about our past, the blessings of justification in the past. What about the present? Verse 2, by whom also we have access today. 
by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And then he goes on and he talks about the basis of our hope. is in verse 6 through 11, or the fact that we are positionally in Christ. But let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning and we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to come together as your children and to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we pray that you be pleasing uh, to all that we say, all that we do. May it all be to the glory of your Son and in your name. And Father, we thank you for uh, those whom that you have uh, helped feel better and those, Lord, who still, we still see them in affliction and struggling and even today, Father, we ask you, Lord, to help them and encourage them, lift their hearts up as we, especially as we go into this message, Lord, that your spirit will just overwhelm the words and that you'll instruct each one of the hearts and the minds. Father, they may hear directly from you this morning and the teaching and what, they, what you would have them to know, what you would have them to hold on to in the nights. Father, we thank you for just your love to us. Thank you, Father, for not leaving us comfortless but bringing the Holy Spirit to bring us into joy, bring us into peace. And just what a blessing you give us in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. So we need to understand in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it says, therefore being justified by faith. We need to understand that that is a past tense. It, it could better read, therefore having been justified. So who's he talking to? He's talking to those who are saved. And before in the chapters, he had established that we need to be justified, that he was not ashamed of the gospel of God, that he says that therein is the righteousness of God revealed, the faith shall live, or I mean the just shall live by faith. So he goes on to establish that it's not by law, it's not by works, it's by the work, the finished work of Jesus Christ and his righteousness. He explained all of that. And then the belief which we have, the like faith that which Abraham had, we believe in the gospel, we believe in the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ at, from the scriptures. And that's what Paul even says. I declare unto you these scriptures, how Jesus Christ, he died, arose again. And so we uh, see that that is the gift of God. Salvation is the gift of God and receive it by faith. Once you've done that, once you have become a believer, You've repented, you've believed, uh, you've felt the godly sorrow in your heart, you've turned to Him and only Him and in full faith and trust in Him that He will save you because He has promised He will save you. And then that peace comes where it used to be turmoil and fear and how would I stand before God? But now we have a peace. And so having come to that point where justified right at that moment, and that is what chapter 5 is saying. Now we're going to move on. I've ex we've explained how to be justified. We've explained what justification is. But now let's move on to look at the glorious benefits of being justified. Now that you are justified, look at this. We have, in verse 1, peace with God. Now, peace involves, we see that the meaning here of peace it means the ceasing of hostility. Peace is the ceasing of hostility. Not just the tranquility of mind. Not just the peace of comfort. Not just the, but it is a declared peace. And so there's two entities involved in this, the, this cessation of hostility. Peace involves two people or parties being reconciled. To each other. God is at peace with the believer, and
and the believer is at peace with God. Having peace with God. If you have not been justified, you are not at peace with God. That's what that says. Negatively, you can say in verse 5, Therefore, not having been justified, you do not have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We see that in John 3.18, he says that he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. If you are not justified today, then you are not at peace with God. There has not been a ceasefire of hostility between you and God to you. Your heart is still at enmity against God. You still hate the things of God. You don't seek the things of God. And now God, and it says in chapter 1, what has God revealed against those who are under, of the unrighteous? His wrath. His wrath is revealed uh, against all ungodliness and on all righteousness and those who hold the truth. They suppress the truth of God, His holiness, His almighty creator, our sustainer, he, our lawgiver, the one who we're ultimately will judge us. You've suppressed the truth of Him down and down. You've held the truth in unrighteousness. Even so much so to try to free your guilt of the judgment that is coming one day. What have you done? You have changed the image of God in your own imagination to corruptible things of this earth. You have whittled God down. You've taken Him off, your thro- off His throne in your mind and you've put Him in your pocket. And whenever you need a genie, that's who you've got. You don't see a God as a God of wrath and of judgment and of justice. The Bible cleanly, or clearly teaches that. That the wrath of God is revealed. Not just the eschatological wrath. Not just the wrath to come. But we see the punishment and the consequence of sin today. We feel and bear the sorrow of decay. We feel and bear the sorrow of grief in our life. And of disease. You know, here's the thing, is we need to understand as God's people, we will never cure sin. God has ransomed and rescued us from the wrath of God against sin. Jesus will one day eradicate sin from everything, from the earth. And He casts death and hell into the lake of fire, which burneth forever and ever. And so we see that if you are not justified the day the ceasefire has not been called, you are not at peace with God and God is not at peace with you. In Matthew 22 it says, Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Many believe they have a peace with God but they're at peace with the God of their own imagination. And that's what we see. But if they were to see the true God, they would tremble under the weight of their own sin. But they say they're at peace. But the hostility has ceased. Therefore, being justified, we have peace with God. God has reconciled us. Oh, through love through love, through the election of grace and, and through His, His mercy, His endless love is, is without boundary. He has come, He saved me, He sought me, and He has saved me for His namesake and all glory and praise and blessing be the God for saving me. I did not reach up to Him, He reached down to me and He saved me right where I was. And if He did all the work, He's not going to let me bring a bad name to His work. I'm not going to lose my salvation. I'm justified because He's done that work. And so all glory and power to Him. There will never be anyone in heaven saying, look what I did. It will all be, look what Christ did for me. He saved me. I don't know why. I don't know why He chose me in Christ. I don't know why He shed His love on me. I don't know why He's justified me. 
But I know that I am His. I know it because I have a peace with God. And that's what it says here. We have uh, been reconciled. If we had time, we would turn uh, to 2 Corinthians 5, but it says we have, have peace with Him. Hostility has also ceased with the believer. And I need to move a little bit quicker. And he or she is at peace with God. You not only have positional peace. In justification, we looked in Sunday school as a forensic and a law term. It's how you stand before the state of God and His judgment and His law. How does the state find you? Does it find you guilty? Does it find you innocent? Well, what is it basing my guilt and innocence on? It's basing it off God's law. So what does the law declare about you? There will be no hiding from the law. There will be no hiding from God. Everything that's done in dark will be brought to light. Everything that's done in secret shall be brought to be light. Everything that we do. So we stand before God guilty positionally if you have not been justified. There's hostility. You cannot have the peace of God until you have the peace with God. Peace with God means that you have peace in the state. My affairs have been settled and I have been justified. Uh, I was mentioning in, in Sunday school, and I don't mean to embarrass Jason, but I gave Jason great advice one morning. He he he'll, he'll get up, he'll get ready for the bus stop. He gets ready for school. Uh, but he, he likes to get up, come downstairs, and sleep on the couch till it's time to go. I would do the exact same thing. So one day I said, Jason, why, why don't you do this? Why don't you, as soon as you get up, and you know you have time, why don't you go ahead and get ready now? Get ready, put your shoes on, brush your teeth, comb your hair, do whatever you need to do to get ready so that way when the bus comes, all you have to do is go. And then you can sleep. Then you can rest. And that's the same thing with us. Now is the time of salvation. Now is the time that we need to get ready to leave. Is there anything left that we need to do? do? Do you need to get right with Lord? If you think you have peace with God and you're not justified by faith, if you're not saved today, you do not have peace. With God, you are not you are a criminal of the state. And if you think you that at the last minute you're going to just run around because the Lord's coming, the Lord's coming, the Lord could take you like that. It's not a slow deathbed for everybody. It could be a very instantaneous. Are you ready? Are you ready? I've I've got everything ready. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go see my Lord. There's nothing left to do because I have peace in my heart. Because the sufficiency of salvation is in God, in Christ. And that's one of the things I want to talk about. Um, We cannot have peace of God. You can't have that full assurance until you have peace with God. Here's some practical tests that I want to just throw out here to you. The practical tests of knowing you're justified and having a peace. Having a peace. One... The person who is justified can answer the accusations of their conscience against themselves. The one who is justified has peace of mind. Can you answer your own accusations against yourself? How could I be a child of God? How could Lord ever, ever forgive me? This wicked heart that I have, and at times I have... uh, Wicked thoughts. You know, our conscience accuses us. It wants us to doubt our salvation. Hebrews 1.3 says this, When Jesus by Himself purged our sins. Who purged our sins? Jesus. Jesus. When your thoughts accuse you, think about this. None of us are good enough to be saved. None of us are worthy to be saved. And purging my sins wasn't a work done by me. It was a work done by Christ. And what did He do after He purged my sins? He sat down on the right hand of God.
God the Father. He sat down. The work is finished. For, and Peter says, For we are not redeemed with corruptible things, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, there's the value. There's the glory. And that is, how would you answer your mind when your mind accuses you? You cannot be of God. There's no way. Oh, I'm not redeemed by what I do. I'm redeemed by what He's done. And the value of salvation is not in me. It's in Him. And that's who I look to, my anchor. I look to Him, my Savior. He's the one who saves. He's the one who justifies. If a person cannot answer the accusations of their own conscience against themselves, they have neither experience the peace that comes through justification by faith or they don't have justification by faith. Because if you believe a God of your own imagination, you're never going to have rest because you know you're always going to fall short. You know you're always going to be that person who falls short. You know, it's trying times that want to shake our confidence. You know, there's also Satan comes and accuses us. Do we have an answer for Satan? Do we have an answer when he comes and accuses you? There's no way. You think this wicked, you do this and you do that. There's no way that you're saved, that you're a child of God. The Satan will accuse you. He will cause you to... He throws seeds of doubt and unbelief. But what do we see about Abraham? Abraham staggered not of the promises of God. He was not weak through faith, but he was strong through faith. Abraham believed God so much so that it is as if it has already happened. It is as if it's already happened. A person who is justified also possesses peace. A person who is justified does not go seeking peace. They have it already. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. It's a matter of fact. You, you don't have to go look for peace. It already is within us. Now, we have peace of conscience in the mercy of God. We have peace of heart in the love of God. We have peace of mind in the truth of God. And we have peace in soul with the presence of God. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, where there is a firm grasp. Also, uh, here's another practical test. The third one, where there is a firm grasp of the justification by faith, when we understand it, when we come to understand it and come to rest in Him and His promises, and the fact that we have peace with God, this peace is also, we are able to not be afraid of death or afraid of God's judgment. When you fully come to understand and appreciate and love and trust. And just if you come to understand justification by faith, that takes the fear of death away. I mean, it still may be there and knee-jerk, and especially it's easy for someone who's not seeing death to, to say those things, but uh, that's what the Word of God says. Someone who is justified by faith has peace, as a matter of fact. And so we have peace... The, we do not fear death nor the judgment of God. In Hebrews chapter 2, you don't have to turn there, but it states how God had put everything, when God created the heaven and the earth, He put everything under man's subjection, right? He made all things sub subject to man. But what does it say in Hebrews chapter 2? Except one thing. There's one thing man was, is not, there's one thing that does not obey man. Death. Death was the only thing that was not put under subjection to man. But it says in Hebrews 2.14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, He also, Jesus, Himself likewise took part of the same. Jesus took on the flesh and blood that I have, that through death, Jesus' death, He might destroy him that hath the power of death, that is the devil, and listen to this, and deliver them who th through fear of death 
were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Jesus, if he has delivered you the day, he's delivered your fear of death. That's what it says. Because death was not under my reign. Death's never been under my reign. God has given all things under the the feet of Adam. They're in creation, but not death. Jesus came. And He took upon Him my flesh and blood. He took upon Him the the sting of death. And there is no more sting of death to those who are in in Christ. And so we see that understanding Christ's work, understanding our justification by faith in His work, we can no longer, we can be at peace when thinking about death. What about you? Do you sometimes picture yourself on your deathbed? Do you sometimes picture you dying? Can you say that I'll have peace when I die? Is there anything left? Are you at peace with God? Do you fear judgment to come? There are other points that I wanted to get to, but one real, real quickly... Another practical question with justification by faith. All of the things which I've discussed, all these benefits of peace, here's the question. Would you have them even when you've fallen into sin? Would you still have them? Even after you've fallen into sin. There's the big one. So here's the thing. Is when, if you believe that one sin can make you lose your salvation, lose your justification. That's not peace. And if you truly are justified today, you know, if you truly believe that one sin can take you out of justification, then you believe that it was your obedience that brought you into it. And that's not what the Bible teaches. If it's not my obedience which brought me into justification, it can't be my disobedience which takes me out. Justification is based on the merit and the work of Christ, in Christ alone. And He has accomplished. He has the victory. Um, you know, and this is a dangerous doctrine, but all, you know, some people could say, hey, that's a dangerous doctrine. You believe that you can sin all you want. Look, every doctrine is dangerous if you misunderstand it. You need to understand the doctrine. And so we must never feel that we've lost everything because we have fallen into sin. You are not justified over and over based on sin. And it says that in verse 1, don't lose sight of this, it's past tense. Having been justified. I've been justified once already. I don't need to be justified again. And so I can't lose that. Now, of these things that we need to understand, that the devil will set out to accuse you of your past life. The, your conscience will set out to accuse you of your past life. Think about John Newton who wrote Amazing Grace. This man was wicked. He, he actually was in the slave trade. And before the Lord saved him, he led a wicked, wicked life. But the Lord saved him and, and you better believe that Satan was accusing him of being who he used to be all the time. His own conscience probably didn't have peace of who he used to be. We saw Paul in Acts of who he was and the Lord changed him. And uh, Paul, uh, was, you know, how beautiful it was that Paul was seeking companionship and God was giving Paul companionship. It's not about who you were. And then the Satan will try to defeat you. He will rehash your past. Your own conscience it will want to re- uh, rehash it. Now, faith, we need to understand, faith is the victory over doubt. When accusations, your own conscience or the devil, or you start looking at your life and you, you start, Lord, how, how can I be saved? How can I? The, the things I think, the things I do. And Satan will, he'll pour it on. Uh, John Newton wrote this song. We all know Amazing Grace, but here's another song that I love. Now listen to the, the lyrics and then we'll be dismissed. It's called Pleading His Gracious Name. Pleading His Gracious Name. I bowed down beneath a load of sin. 
by Satan sorely pressed, by war without and fears within, I come to thee for rest. Be thou my shield and hiding place that sheltered near thy side, I may my fierce accuser face and tell him thou hast died. <laughs> o oh, wondrous love, to bleed and die, to bear the cross and shame that guilty sinners such as I might plead thy gracious name. <laughs> that wonderful? There is no too great a sinner. There is no too great a sin that God cannot save. And it will all be to the glory of His grace. Do you have full assurance of your faith? Hebrews 10.22 says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of our faith, having it sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Um, many times that we battle Satan and many times he will bring accusations against you, but understanding justification by faith and understanding that the finished work is in Calvary and Him alone. Do we have an answer to our own accusations? Do we have an answer to the devil's accusations? Do, do we have peace? Do we have the, the comfort knowing that when we die, the Lord has taken the sting out of death. He's conquered it. And that one day that we will be with Him forever and ever and ever in glory. We shall see Him as He is. What a beautiful hope. I know we just got through verse 1, but we have a past hope, a present hope, and a future hope. Because we experience the blessings of God's finished work of justification by faith. We experience it now. And I pray the Lord has richly blessed you. If He's spoken to your heart at all on anything that you feel like you want to bring before the church, and if not, I would love to speak with you in private if you want to speak in private after the message. But let's all stand. And Brother Ron and Sister Harriet, if you would come, we'll...